So when we talk about Lombardy, especially if you ask me in Italian, talking about, tell me about Lombard, wine from Lombardy. Lombardy, it's not linked with wine in, in the imaginary of the prejudice of most of the Italians. When we think about Lombardy, we think about an industrial area. It's Milano, it's Brescia, and uh, it's all, all the... It's, uh, Lombardy is the place where, where you, know, you, don't, you don't produce food and wine. You, you sell in the stock market and, <laughs> and you produce maybe like nails or... or, or or fashion or, or something else and uh, w this is kind of an unfair because Lombardy is incredibly interesting there is a wild nature not so far from the city and even, we're not talking about the flat area around Milan I'm talking about the higher mountains and the Alps and the pre-Alps think about Valtellina for example Valtellina in my opinion uh, is an incredible wine region that produces an incredible version of Nebbiolo in that specific case they call it Chiavennasca the Nebbiolo that is not as heavy as the as the as the at the Barolo and Barbaresco, the tannins are slightly lighter, and you have more uh, this is slate soil that gives to the wine a nice uh, metallic flavor. When it comes to sparkling, that's a bit more complex because there is this area called the Francia Corta, and Francia Corta is kind of a slightly invented wine region. As a sparkling, you know, there's Berlucchi that started, I think, at the, the end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s, and then uh, Cadel Bosco and Moretti, they created this wine region that was, uh, it was an incredible uh, economical and, uh, and marketing uh, thing that they did. I think they did it really well. But maybe the overproduction of that area was about creating an, an, an imitation of Champagne. So they started to plant Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And I know how it happened. You know, when you have an opportunity to plant the vineyards in the valley, it's surely easier, but also the quality may be lower. And then you have to, you know, adjust the wine, you know, sometimes doing like a, a young harvest. So you harvest maybe a month before because in the valley it's too hot for the Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So you need to maintain acidity. So it's kind of a raw grape. And, uh, and, and so only recently some of the winemakers, some of them, for example, are winemakers that work in those big wineries. This is one of them. I cannot tell you where he was working. And he actually, what he told me in the interview that is that you can see in the video, uh, I learned everything wrong, all, all the wrong things that I was not supposed to do, that's what I learned. So I'm doing now the opposite. And uh, he bought a couple of wild vineyards uh, on, in, uh, in uh, Colle San Giuseppe, which is just on the corner of, uh, of, um, of Francia Corta. So technically this wine is not a Francia Corta. And he's making only like 4,000 bottles. I really like the way how these wines are subtle and the, you can feel that the, the grape is ripe so you have a nice fruity flavor. You don't have all this strongly uh, sweet uh, uh, bread crust uh, uh, type of flavor, buttery flavor that you come from the yeast. So even the yeast is rebalanced. I think it's a unique type of wine. It's not a champagne. It's not a Francia Corta. It's something in between with a, with a big personality. It's a wine that it's one of my favorite sparkling wine from north of Italy. This wine, I don't even have to tell you how to pair it. As long as you don't pair it with something that is sweet, it can go from an aperitif from a complex dish. You can enjoy it.